Christian Chua, who is the CSP. He is from Singapore. And uh, he shares expertise on international television like BBC, Australia, Philippines, and uh, I think a few other countries. He's a regular in the Malaysian insurance industry and he often visits us here in Malaysia. However, this time it's virtual. We will look at him. He can, is it live? Is he going to be live? Yeah. So he's going to actually be able to see all of you because we have that uh, monitor over there, that, that uh, laptop. He's going to be seeing you as well. So don't sleep off. So in the presentation, he has prepared how we can actually look at fortune telling skills. We can all acquire fortune telling skills. How? Rather, he says, just read the clues from a person's facial features. If you look at a person's face, yeah, Christian, and look at his face right now, we can tell exactly what he's having on his mind. I'm waiting to talk to all of you. Sharma, get up the stage. And he says, you read the clues from a person's facial features, and that reveals a lot. Let me not say what he's going to say best. Over to you, Christian. Good morning, Malaysia. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to uh, see all of you. I'm uh, Christian Chua. Let me share my slides immediately so we can get it going. And uh, I ask organizers to make it 50 50 because this is a body language uh, training or speech, so you need to see my body. Lah. <laughs> okay, so uh, for those old friends, um, nice to see you again. I think it's almost like 10 years uh, since I last spoke at MAPS. And for the new people, I'm Christian Chua. I've been speaking for over 20, over years. I've uh, been on TV, radio, internet, written seven books. Have, have you heard of me before? Yes. No. Uh, uh, it's okay, yeah, those who never heard of me, I did you heard. But anyway, if you want to know more about me, go to my website. ChristianChua.com. Don't Google my name, okay? If you Google my name, Christian Chua, Google brings you to Chua Chukang Christian Cemetery. <laughs> okay, so a, a bit of why I uh, chose to teach you about or share with you about body language, I, I think that is one of my uh, core strengths. As you can tell, uh, during the president election of uh, Donald Trump, and she was, he was battling out against uh, Hillary Clinton, I was on uh, international TV. Um, this is Channel News Asia. This was beam up to about 50 million people. And subsequently, when Singapore hosted the first Trump and Kim summit, uh, I was on BBC, Thomson Reuters, uh, Australian 7, um, Lena Chapa, One Power, and others. Uh, so that is my uh, core strength. And I want to share with you today how speakers could use uh, body language reading to enhance their negotiation skills and also to uh, um, retrieve information like budget, uh, how much your client has, and when you ask the client, hey, how much is your budget? You say, I uh, don't know what you put, like, you put like. I'm going to teach you how to review that. Is that okay? Good. And uh, just to prove, I, just, I, mean, I was half the mind wanting to be live there with you today, and uh, I know the convention was slightly delayed, 10 or 15 minutes, I thought I can drive through to the causeway, so I took a look at the causeway at Singapore site, and so now you can see the traffic back up all the way to Indonesia. So sorry, <laughs> I, I can't put you. <laughs> Virtually, this is also proof, see, this is today's day, lah. so this is live here, lah. this is our pre-recording. Okay, so very good. So what is the use of body language? Uh, I've got 30 precious minutes. I'm going to spend 15 minutes on body language. I'm going to spend 15 minutes on another thing called face profiling. Okay, so body language is to know what people are thinking without the need of them telling you. So if you're a host and you know, uh, you have a bunny, if anybody walking up the stage, you should already uh, look at their face whether they're going to give you a slap. All right. Uh, okay, so with this skill, uh, I never get, uh, you know, like, be slapped on stage or if a hurling object is coming my way, I will know how to avoid it one half. So this Okay, so that's what we're gonna talk about today. Alright? So what I want to share with you is uh, how to um to retrieve information and tells and all those. I was wondering how can I um uh, change my let me give me a second. I change my camera angle so you can see me better. Yeah, the other angle. Okay, can. Ah, now we see another angle. So now I want to share with you how it's done. Okay, so during a negotiation, you sit down. They're gonna they're gonna ask you about 
uh, what are you going to propose and what are you going to speak and uh, you know, they start out neutral. Okay, tell me, tell me about your, what you can do. So they sit upright, okay. As you continue to speak, they start to lean forward and if they lean forward, it's a very good sign, okay. You see the, the guy when he's leaning forward, means he's interested to hear you more. Okay. So it is, why, why do they lean forward? You know that. With your friends, uh, sometimes you say, hey, hey, come, come, come. I tell you what happened to John and, and his wife. Hey, come, 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 come. Or your hey, go all start leaning forward. Because you're interested. Okay, so when you are uh, saying some, um, giving a proposal that they're very keen, they start leaning forward. So that's a good sign. That's one of the best sign. Then after that, halfway through, uh, they move to this position. Okay. From, you see how body language work is like that. What you put into their head, will invoke an emotion. The in, in emotion personifies into action. So that's how body uh, language works. So what we do, we see the opposite. How come the action change? How come there's a change of emotion? What did we just say? Okay? So if he's from very interested, he's excited, so he's oh, very excited, very excited. Then suddenly when you, uh, he moves into this position and there's a slight frown, you stop and you don't continue to, to sell out yourself. You ask yourself, what did I just say a couple of seconds ago that made him change from very interested to, wait a minute, okay? So when you do ask yourself, so for speakers hypothetically, it could be the fee range, okay? So I said, so by the way, uh, I, I need, uh, this is my proposal, very good, very good, um, but I usually want 100% advance payment before I start the job. Then from there he goes, wait a minute, we can do that because we are MNCs, we need you to send in the invoice, we take time for the process, uh, at least 14 days. Okay, so from very interested to, hmm, let me consider. You don't proceed. The moment you see there's a change in physiological state, you ask yourself what you just said. And if what you said was, uh, I need 100% upfront payment, you saw him change, you asked him, Sir, just now when I mentioned that I need 100% upfront payment, uh, is that an issue with you? Okay, and then he says, uh, yeah, actually we, we can't do that. Um, you will be a big company, MNC, so your payment will come in between 14 to 30 days uh, in the mail. Is that okay? And if it's okay with you, yeah, okay, no problem. We'll make an exception. Oh, okay, that's great. Then we'll continue the discussion. Okay, so you eliminate one question mark. And then you start talking again and he's really interested. Then suddenly he goes into this. Okay? And exactly the same, you just said something that changed his emotional state, changed his physical manifestation. So you don't continue pitching. You think back, what did I just say in the last 15 seconds that changed his um, demeanor? And what you might have said is, okay, on top of my fees, all your participants are required to purchase one copy of my book. So 50 participants, 50 books extra at uh, 30 ringgit each. So maybe not agreeable, but he's not saying, he's just showing you not agreeable. Okay, so when that happens, don't continue pitching. He said, by the way, when I mentioned about the book sale, is that all right with you? Yeah, he said, no, we just wanted you to do the keynote speech. We have no intention of giving them anything because we have our own in-house manuals and uh, kind of logs and there's just too much of a bundle. Can you just uh, remove that clause? And then he said, oh, no problem. That's not no problem at all. Uh, we just talk about the fees and the fees uh, and the keynote. Is that okay? Yeah, that's okay. And then they're interested again. So if you continue just to look at these two signs, and each time you see it going into negative or evaluating, stop and go back. And as long as there is no reason for them to say no because you countered every objection, they're going to say yes. Okay? Now, this is probably the worst uh, body language you're going to see. Um, probably a lady will not be doing this, but some of your male buyers might. After you go, go on for half an hour telling how great you are, how you have spoken uh, at 300 countries, over seven continents, in two planets, 
to really drop the rustle species. He's got bored and he's like, okay, okay, let's get over with it. And his eyes are rolling. And then you thought you're doing so well. And then you ask him, any questions? He, he is likely to say no questions. Likely. Why? Because the more he asks you, the more you continue to talk to him. So he'll smile at you politely and say, okay, uh, let us consider uh, if anything we we'll get back to you. Don't be hopeful. It's a gone, it's a gone case. Okay, so if he is at this position while uh, he is dismissing you, it's a gone case. So what you need to do is, um, Mr. Buyer, what actually are you looking for in your speaker? And how can I make this deal sweeter for you? Are you keen in hiring us? And he said, yeah, but there are so many constraints that um, make it very unattractive for us to hire you. So you see at this position, and then you say, Mr. Speaker, tell me what can I do to make this deal uh, sweet for you? Immediately, you will see him put down his hand and he said, if you knock off 20% of your fees and give us a package of three, three paid trainings, you give us one free. Hypothetically, I'll give you an example. Then I'll be interested. The moment you said that, it, what, what can I do? What can I do to make this deal sweeter? He got back into the negotiation, and that, my friend, is one of those powerful body language tips I want to share with you because just using this technique, you could actually save a lot of lost sales. Do you enjoy that tip so far? Yeah. Yeah. yeah? Yes. Very good. Thank you very much. So the other tip I want to share with you with regards to. Um, Body language or speech analysis is this one, and it's called questioning techniques. Okay, unlike the law case that you have been watching between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, I'm a body language expert. People ask me to analyze. I say it is so boring. I don't even want to analyze. This is just a case of husband and wife quarrel. You said this, I said that. I throw things at you. You throw things at me, and at the end, the outcome came exactly what I expected. You got awarded some money, I got awarded some money. Uh, Amber has now been heard and the lawyers are extremely rich. So this is the question I want you to do uh, when you have finished pitching the deal. Okay, uh, or when you, are, you want to retrieve information on how much the customer uh, has a budget. So usually the customer will say, okay, let's get uh, uh, Johan, Mark, let's get Johan. We got a budget in our mind, but let's negotiate with him. Okay, so they call Johan in and then they ask him, okay, one hour speech, Putrajaya, okay, 5,000 people, uh, how much? Okay, Johan, if you reply, uh, you, this is what you do, you paraphrase again, so this is what you need me to do, 30 minutes, half an hour, 5,000 people, it's about sales motivation, my fees are, so for example, you say, my fees are 30,000 RF. You need to ask this question. Is that okay with you? If you just talk, my fees are 30,000 ringgit, you do not ask for a response. When you ask, my fees are 30,000 ringgit, is that okay with you? Most customers are not prepared for the answer. Okay? So if it was within their budget, if they plan to give you 40,000 ringgit, and you say 30,000, most of the time you will see this. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Okay, they are very excited to close you immediately. If they say, okay, 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 three times, you underquoted. <laughs> okay, if they just say, uh, if they, uh, they have 30,000 in mind and you are spot on, 30,000, then they say, yeah, okay, that is uh, great, uh, we, we will confirm you. Okay, at that calmness is almost there, you got it almost correct. Now, if you ask for 30, but they uh, uh, have a budget of 20, you will roughly see this reaction. So my fees are 30,000 ringgit. Would that be fine with you? Uh, um, okay, uh, 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 is already a response. Okay, so unlike lawyers who always want to hear yes or no, when there's a hesitation, you have gone over, over. Uh, well, uh, then you ask, is 30 too high? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a bit too high. Then you, you pitch again, uh, so how about 25? 
Does this sound okay? Uh, still too high. Okay. I tell you what, since this is my first time, okay, I'm happy to do it for a showcase. So, does 20,000 sound okay with you? Ah, 20,000, okay. Spot on, okay? So this is what you, you guys can do before you do it black and white on a paper. If you do a black and white paper and then you get a man, uh, not very, very nice. Uh. So you do a call first and then you ask this. You can do it over the phone. You can do it over the Zoom. You can do it live. You see their reaction. And this is the question you ask. And many people do not do this. So I actually teach this uh, to even uh, real estate people, motor car sales people, uh, the house, you know, we ask them, are you likely to buy? You see an instant reaction over there, you know, uh, you are, that's a hot lead, okay? And you go press on. Okay, you guys got it? Enjoy that? Very good. Thank you very much. Nobody's responding, I'm just saying so <laughs> Okay, very good. So this other part I want to share with you, and I, I you know, I, I told the organizer I'll share two things, and this is, I think, going to be quite new to you. It's face reading, but not in the Joey Yap sense. Uh. This is a uh, hotel talent. This is a uh, profiling, and uh, I think in Singapore there's only two or three of us who are actually doing this. So I think it could be quite new to you guys. It's under the science called epigenetics. The epigenetics is about 22 over years old, and what actually it does, it, it explains is that how you feel your environment, what's indoctrinated. Uh, to you by your parents, your teachers, your religious uh, leaders, uh, it will manifest on the structure of your face. That's why, uh, uh, how can I say, Tico, uh, Tico, look like Tico. Uh. <laughs> when you got a sexual predator, look like one, and a good guy look like one, and, and so on. So when, uh, yesterday I was doing a six hour, eight hour body language workshop in Singapore, and I showed them some pictures, I said, who you trust? And the whole class would say, oh, I trust the left one, oh, I trust the right one. I said, then you are profiling also, uh, you already know, because this is an instinct that is actually built in us, and in animals too. So when when the giraffe is born, immediately you see the lion, you need to go to school, you know that is danger, you run off. Okay. Where did they learn this? That's an inbuilt instinct. And actually, naturally, we have, okay? But society sometimes tells us cannot judge, cannot ask comment. But this is actually a science, and I'm going to show you uh, some fascinating things. Okay. So this is Scott and Mark Kelly. Uh, they are identical twins since birth. Uh, they are NASA astronauts. But when you want to look, they kind of look alike, but they kind of look not alike too. So you, from the face structure, you can see the guy on the right, uh, Scott Kelly, uh, has a, actually a bigger face. And uh, Mark has a smaller face. So what does this say? Well, they look quite identical when they were kids. When they got married and lived apart, the city that they live in, if it's more dangerous or a calmer place like a farm area, their face actually changed according to their environment. Okay, so who looks fear more fierce in this case? I can't hear your response, but I'm sure most of you will say the guy on the right looks more fierce. And why? Well, because his face is bigger. But where did you come to that conclusion that bigger face people look fiercer? Obviously, you saw another bigger face person on the streets that was fierce. That's the reason why it's a big data thing. Okay? So in this case, because his face is bigger, we kind of know that, that, that he's a fiercer person or he has met up with an environment that requires him to be more strong and aggressive because his environment requires him to do so. Okay? So another fascinating thing that you're going to know that it's we, if we split the face into two, your right side tells me about what's happening in your professional side and your left side tells me what's happening at home and your family side. Okay, there's no time to explain to you this data. I'll give you a QR code, you can hear the full lecture that I've done. But I want to share with you something that is going to be useful as speakers, okay? So when we see this, the personal side, when we split the, the face, you see, the personal side of Mark and Scott, you see the year one is sticking out and the other guy is okay, close to the, the face. Years that are close to the face are more compliant people. People that will follow rules very strictly and uh, they go under the radar, you know, they don't want to be uh, uh, break out of the box, things like that. But for Mark, the guy on the left, his left ear is sticking out slightly. It tells me that in the office is very compliant because he's an astronaut, and on the left side at home, he can be a little bit more expressive because he's not under any kind of rules and regulation. So he's probably going to be a more fun father and a more fun husband. Maybe for all you know, in his basement, he's a rock star, <clears throat> right? That is the clues. 
Further to show you proof, this is my friend Jaslyn from Singapore. She's an insurance director. You see her age when she from 10 years old, 16 to 30. And her face actually grew quite quite long and uh, longish. Some of you grow this way and some of you grow that way. So a longer face with a very strong nose ridge. The nose ridge you see is very high nose ridge. It's an independent person with a strong character, a very corporate. You see a lot of very corporate lady have longer faces. Okay, and the reason why your face keeps moving is because there are three or four segments in your skull that's never totally fused. It moves throughout your lifetime. Okay, so you can see the, the stretching of the face. This is based on epigenetics. Now, your daughter Michelle Liu has a very strong nose ridge, quite unusual for Asian Chinese women who usually has a very low nose ridge. So this, this nose ridge is low. The word is called neoteny, which is baby-like features. So the Westerners like all oh, these uh, Asian girls because they look very cute, cute, okay, cute type. So the Western girls usually have a stronger nose ridge. Why? Because but in America, it's always about freedom of speech. You can stand up, you can talk, you can say what uh, you must fight for rights. For Asian, please, no talking. Girls keep quiet, boys keep quiet. Uh, uh, adults are talking, children must keep quiet. So that's what we are told. Okay, so eventually we grow into this uh, this stuff. Okay. So when uh, you see Michelle, Dr. Michelle, you her nose ridge is so um, high and so powerful. She's a very powerful lady. She do her own stunts. Uh, she's won so many awards. And the rest of us with the low nose ridge, we are kind of uh, very people people oriented. We love hanging around with people. Okay, so this is one of those clues that you can uh, see when you uh, see your clients. If you see a very powerful face, okay, the person, don't mess around with that person, they're totally in control. When they hire you, they're going to ask you questions, they're going to ask you the signs of whatever you are teaching. The other one, when the, uh, the one on the left, you can find her a much easier customer. Okay, can, okay, can, okay, okay, simple. And uh, very obliging and, you know, okay, yeah, okay, no problem, you're, you're, you're the speaker, uh, we, we trust you, you're the speaker. You see the difference right now? Yeah, right now? That's what I want to share with you. So further proof is this guy called Iqbal Mashia. When I googled him, wow, you see at, at 12 years old, he actually had adult-like features. Very unusual compared to most uh, kids which have very baby-like features. So when I look at the background story, Iqbal Mashia was sold off by his father at 4 years old because the father owed a debt of 8 UK pounds, eight pounds he sold his son. But this son, instead of crying and you know, felt lost, he was so mature, at four years old, he did the prison break, he escaped, he ran to the police station and said, help me, help me. Unfortunately, the police was under, was corrupted and so they brought him back to the slave owners and they threw him back into the prison of uh, child slavery again. He did a second prison break and this time he got out, he ran further to the next city and he surrendered himself and this time, Amnesty and all saved him and uh, you know they rescued him and he went around the world giving talks and then uh, uh, 12 years old unfortunately he was assassinated okay so when we see such face there's always a story behind it okay so now when I show you my former leader President S.R. Nathan your former leader President Donald Trump JFK Xi Jinping you see they have all these boxy boxy heads a lot of presidents have very boxy heads why that's usually the leadership type of uh, um, skull or what you call it, very boxy. They have so many things to consider. They want things to go according to a system and rationalizing. So when you see a client like this, okay, they are going to ask many questions. If you see a client like Barack Obama, which has a rounder head, he wants a little bit more entertainment, you know, what can you bring? Can you bring something out of the box for my client? Okay, so that is what I want to talk about. So two more points I can share with you about how do you read your client. Number one is uh, those who have eyelids and those who have uh, no eyelids. The one on the right, you've got double eyelids and the one you have is a single eyelid or no eyelids. But when I say no eyelids, doesn't mean that person sleep with the eyes open up. Okay, it means that when you open the eyes, the eyelids go behind. Okay, those with no, eye, no eyelids, uh, they are more pragmatic. They process information sequently. Those with eyelid, double eyelids, they are more empathetic. Let's make it simple. Left brainer, right brainer. 
And that is what is space reading really the best thing is to tell you whether this person is more left brainer or right brainer. And when you handle a left brainer, what you didn't logic, fact, scientific proof. When you handle a right brainer, what you give them? Entertainment, music, uh, comedy, uh, uh, emotions. The right brainer like to hear inspirational story, inspirational speakers. Left brainer like to hear rational speakers, practical tips. Okay? I know what some of you are doing now. Take out a phone, right? Uh, what the hell do I look like? La? I don't even know what I look like. <laughs> okay, left A. Hey, if you are a uh, uh, right brainer, you got, you got massive eyelids and your spouse have massive eyelids, uh, Valentine's Day cannot forget what I'm they need the romance, okay? For me, I lucky, I have no eyelid, my wife also no eyelid, we not no romantic, not romantic, just practical, okay? During Valentine's Day, I said, honey, I buy for you 25 roses. She said, the one, roses, mati, die, take the money, buy for me toaster. Wow, oh, so romantic. Okay, <laughs> okay. so um, for my final tip here is about uh, High years and low years. Uh, by the way, there are more than 150 points. Uh, so my last slide, if you want QR code, you all stand by your, your phone. You just click on the QR code, goes to one of my YouTube, which I previously did a talk. I unlist it for you all so that you all can watch for free. I'm not capturing any information. I'm not trying to sell you anything. It is something that I thought about long time, never go to Malaysia already, must give you something in return. Okay, I'm not asking for anything. It's only when I go to KL and I put on Facebook, I'm going to KL. I hope two or three of the speakers say, I bring you go to uh, Lorong Alalo or what to make eat. Ah, that one, okay, that's all. So when we talk about high years, low years, is when you draw a line across your eyebrow, does your ear go above the, the line? That's high years. When you draw a line along your nose, does the ear loops go below? I'll show you a picture in a moment. Okay, if it goes below the line, it's considered low ears. Okay? So high ears people in this picture, imagine a hound dog. They are very alert. That's why whoop, the ears up. Okay, the sleepy dog. Whoop, it continues to below. Okay? So very easy to remember. So the high ears people, when you talk to them, they need things fast. They need information fast. That will be coupled with where if the eyebrow is low near the eyes. Okay, high ears, low eyebrow, very intense. You think of a German Shepherd and all those yeah, like that. Okay, very intense. Okay, so that's high ears, low eyebrow. They need informa information quick. You want to be very succinct in the way that you present your proposals. Okay, don't give grandfather's story, probably they like bullet points, get to the point. Finish your proposal, in, in, finish your pitch in three to five minutes and then ask, do you have any questions? They will go very specific into a question that they want to get. They don't want to hear your, all your nitty gritties. You got it? In the same way when you're doing networking, when you, you meet friends and they look very intense, square, jaw, left, brain type, talk about math, science, investment, they love talking to you. Okay, the other opposite is the low ears, high eyebrow one, they are more social. They don't mind talking about your minding on offer, watermelon, three for ten ringgit, the type they like to talk about, okay? <laughs> so this is what we mean by high ears and low ears. You see the guy on the left is a left brainer. He's a very squarish jawline. The eyebrows are low, very near the eyes, and if you draw a line across, the ears are very high. Okay, so when you see such person, you know they are on the go very intense. This is the fatherly type, you draw a line across, you can see the ears loops are cutting below, so it's kind of low ear. The ear doesn't really move, but the, the skull structure actually does. Okay, and in this case, the eyebrows are quite high, it's quite a social fatherly type, very, uh, very friendly type. Okay, on top of what I did not teach you are the lines on the faces, what all, all these lines mean. And when eyebrows are like that, called tangled, tangled eyebrows, uh, they don't really think like, like a, a diplomat, they think like a professor. So um, they have to think about hypothesis and quantum entanglement and all those. So it gives me an impression that this guy is either a, a professor or a religious person. Okay, so that is the QR code I am uh, going to share with you and it's for free. I'll give you a good day.
put in there for just several seconds so that you can uh, enjoy the rest of the 45 minute video later on, not now, now is Max convention. <laughs> I am so um, honored to be the first speaker, uh, which means I can spend the rest of the, not no, no. Okay, <laughs> I will enjoy myself uh, and uh, it has been such a privilege of the platform once again. I, I wish I could be there personally with you, but uh, since I can't, I wish you all the best and happy learning on this Saturday. Max, thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you very much, Christian. That was very good. You know, everyone is literally measuring their ears, looking at others and seeing, is this person like that? Like that or what? You know, why are you so like that one Singapore? That was really excellent. Thank you very, very much. And we look forward to meeting you in person the next time.